Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Brown Cinema. In today's video, I want to go over uh, my mini DSP settings, uh, some VEQ settings, and just kind of show off some of my frequency responses from all my subwoofers and how I tie them in to make uh, a summation of a single sub. Um, so as you can see, C24L2 hard bottle, couple of Dayton audio flat packs, Funk Audio 24E, I have another uh, hard bottle M18S in the back behind my chair for near field and another uh, Dayton UM18 in the back. So uh, in this video I will show you how I tie everything all in and how I use BQ when I watch my movies. So stick around and I will be doing a uh, screen recording of my computer so you can kind of see what I'm doing and I'll describe what's going on. Thanks. I'm going to start off by showing uh, my responses in REW of my subwoofers. Um, please take note uh, when you are checking your base response to have your graph set up properly. I have mine set from 7 hertz to 120 hertz and uh, 5 dB uh, increments. So it is very easy to read the graph. So let me bring up my first one. This is the 224s up front with no EQ on. So as you can see, each single line is a 1 dB increment. Uh, I see a lot of people online. Uh, they are posting with about 10 dB increments. And as you can see, that looks like, like a very smooth, flat response, when in reality, it isn't. You can see that it actually jumps around quite a bit. So please, if you are doing this, make it easier to read. Keep it uh, 5 dB increments. So here we go, two 24s up front. This is their native response. Then I added in the two Dayton UM18s up front. Uh, with, with all four of these sums, I'm running uh, zero delay on the 24s and zero delay on the front UM18s. So this is what I've got. I have then added in the rear Dayton UM18. Um, I have added delay to get this response in blue. So it's uh, it's fixed up a little bit of a null here, um, but the summation is, uh, is pretty good. I do have issues with the low end in the rear of my room, so I don't actually gain much down low. It just fixes up a lot up here. So I will now add in the Harbottle Audio M18S. I gain a little bit down here, uh, but again, the summation is still above the other frequency response. So uh, this, again, is after I've played with delay for the Harbottle M18. So after that, I used this response of all my subwoofers and I did my EQ. Now for my EQ, after EQ I should say, this is the response that I got. So uh, what I have done in the past was uh, I have EQ'd my whole response with a house curve to the way I wanted it. Uh, this time what I've tried was from 30 hertz and below, I have EQ'd. So that's why this is a little tighter than what you can see over here. Uh, it only used five bands of the PEQ to get this uh, response. So it boosted a couple dB here, which is not a big deal. Um, and then I left this 30 hertz below untouched. I just wanted to try that out to see um, how I liked it. But then I also added in a 6 dB boost from 30 hertz uh, and below of a Q of 0 0.7. You'll see that when I show you the mini DSP. Um, the reason why I boost down low is I'm running sealed subs and the amount of subs and power I have, I have a lot of headroom. So, I mean, boosting this much, uh, I, don't, I don't have anything to worry about. 
So that is my base response for in my room, and that's what I run. So I will show you my mini DSP settings. I have, uh, I'm using a Wi-Fi dongle, so I'm just connecting remotely. So I'm using config one. Um, as you can see on the input, I'm using a negative three gain just because I have so much output from the subwoofers that um, I I can turn it down with this. So on my um, AVM60, I'm running a sub trim of a negative 12, and I'm also adding a negative three on top of that. Um, you can see my subs here, both the 24s here, both the front UM18s here. Then the rear subs are independent because I'm adding delay on these ones where these ones are using zero delay. And so you can see here, sorry, delay of zero, zero, four and a half milliseconds on the UM18 in the back and nine and a half on the M18, which is my near field. All of them are running the same PEQ, so I'm running five bands from 40 hertz and below, and all these are blank except for 10. 10 is where I boosted. So you can see a 30 frequency of 30 hertz, gain of six with a Q of 0 0.7 to give me this uh, 60 dB boost uh, down below. And I can change this to on the fly if I don't want so much gain, I can change this to five. If, if I feel like I want to, but for now I've been leaving it at six and uh, I enjoy it. Um, my crossovers, I'm not using anything. Compressor, I'm using these settings to make sure that I have some sort of protection. Now, once I have everything set the way I wanted to, PQ is obviously blank and input one. I saved these settings. So I come up here, file, I saved the current configuration. So this is what you're going to do for when you want to run BQ. So I saved it to my desktop, and that and that was what I run my config one. When I want to watch a movie, I will use config four. But for everyday use, uh, I run config one. This is just what it is. So for BEQ, open up BEQ Designer. Merge Mini DSP XML, and I refresh this to get all the latest updates. So you can see the latest one. I did this today. It added the King's Man. Um, if, if there's anything else, it'll update it. And it's a good idea to update this uh, frequently to stay up to date with everything. So config file. This is the uh, file that you just that I just saved from the Mini DSP. So my config one file, that would go into here. Output directory, you can save this to uh, wherever you want, which is easy to find. Um, it's just where it's going to save all the movie files. Uh, it's a 2 by 4 HD, and I'm going to overwrite only input one, because I'm only using input one uh, from my AVM60, and that's going to put the BEQ um, file for the, for the movie PEQ in only into input one. All my output, everything like that is always going to stay the same. Once you do that, you hit the save button and it'll process um, for all 1887 movies. Once you have done that, it'll save it to this, this folder here. So then you open up the mini DSP and say I want to watch a movie. I click over to config four. And I want to load the movie, or the movie file. So as you can see, here's all the movie files with BEQ. So say I want to watch 13 hours. It's a BEQ Atmos with a negative 0 0.5 gain. So this is uh, what you're going to take off of your input, or what I do. Some people can do it differently, but... I mean, 0.5, I probably won't change it really, but when you see like a negative 3.5, let's, let's load this one here. So that you gotta make sure you collect or um, select the proper movie file that you're watching if you're gonna watch an Atmos or whatever. So that's the movie I wanna load and it's a negative three and a half gain. 
open this up. And it's going to load that into the input PEQ. All my outputs are all going to remain the same from what I saved earlier. So my EQ that I did in REW is all going to remain the same. So I'm already running negative 3, so if I wanted to add that negative 3.5, that would make this a negative 6.5 gain for that movie. Now you can adjust this if you find that it is too hot. I mean, you can drop that down even more, or if it's not hot enough for your listening, you can you can do that. But I mean, I always normally follow what um, Aaron suggests and then just go from there. So we open up the PQ, and you can see this is the movie uh, PQ for that for that movie. So that's what it has added into. Nothing in this because I didn't select that when I when I did the overwrite. It was only input one. And you can see here all my settings remain the same. All my delays, everything stays the same. The only thing that changes is your movie PEQ for the uh, BEQ. So this is base EQ. Then once I am finished watching the movie, I always, you always got to remember, do not leave this on. If you leave this on and you turn on another movie, uh, you might be asking for trouble because it might be boosting too much for that movie. So once that movie is finished, I just open up this, go back to my original config, and now this is back to its original settings for my everyday use. So that's uh, just as simple as that for using BQ and for loading a movie. I mean, when I go downstairs, by the time everything's loaded up uh, and I'm waiting for the movie to start, I can load up my BQ and it's ready to go. So I just wanted to show you guys pretty much uh, my EQ settings, my house curve, um, how to get BQ uh, set up. You can download BQ Designer from online. It's free. Um, REW is free. But... uh. I highly suggest if you have multiple subwoofers to use this uh, type of setup. Um, if you watch um, the Home Theater Gurus Episode 7, it's an hour and a half long video, but if you follow that step by step, it will show you exactly what to do in, um, in REW for setting up multiple subwoofers. So please go check that out. Now that you guys have seen the video, this is the U-Mic 1 that I use to take the sweeps, and it's attached to the Anthem Room Correction mic stand. Um, I hope this video was very uh, informative for you guys. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and please do not forget to like and subscribe my video. Uh, stay tuned. I have another video coming up very soon of another upgrade that is happening in the Brown Cinema. Thanks again.